Hello everyone. I hope you had a great Easter. I personally spent the entire week eating chocolate and that's also how I plan to spend this next month. Sounds pretty sweet. Now, let's get into our game. For this game, it's Mr. Dave against Miss Jessamine. We're gonna see which one of you guys can guess what is in the picture. I'm gonna start out really blurry and I will slowly zoom in the focus and see who can guess the object first. Ready? Hey. I got this. All right. You're gonna leave me hanging. Oh, there you are. <laughs> it's still squares and blue. Yep, squares, squares. Oh, um, still going, still blue. A balloon. Why would it be a balloon? Because the guy's oh uh, on the it's, bottom. Uh, basketball. A shovel. Um, nunchucks. Uh, um, oh, it's an egg. It's it's, it's for when you dip a, your a, eggs a net, in. A net. No, you take your eggs. Okay, and you put it on top, and when you're dying it, you put it in so you uh -huh. can dip it in different colors. Um. Okay. It looks like a brown bear. A brown bear with a belly button on it. Why in somebody's it, hand. It looks like someone's hand. What do hands. you do with it? Um, They're holding something. Ah, is it? A watch? A watch. It's a watch. No, it's a it's a compass. It's, it's a, compass? a compass. Yes, you tell direction by a compass. People still use it. It was things? right there. Oh. Well, absolutely. Okay. It looks, looks like, like a, a person. Standing, walking, standing. Yeah. Dancing. Waving his arms and legs. Let's what do you do with that, person. though? Still standing like a person. Exercising. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. It's a bookend. You store books with it. Oh yeah, it's a bookend. That would that makes sense because his hands are in a perfect position. That's oh. complicated. It's pink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Still pink. It looks pretty. It's, it's a maze. It's a maze. Yeah, it might be. Um, That's a window frame. It's a person's smiling face. Well, it's a straight face. Window frame. It's a, it's a door. Screen it's a, door. It's a screen door. It's a court. A court. It's oh, a tennis court. A tennis court. No. A pickleball court. I don't know what that is. Uh -huh. It's a clock. A clock with what time on it? And what do you do? It oh, says. You tell what time to eat. Oh, it's a. Oh no no no! It's uh, a swimming barometer. Oh. That's super blurry. Um, I'm brown. It's still super blurry and brown. Boxes. Oh, it's a... A cylinder. No, no, it's it's a tool. It's, oh, there's a finger there. It's a tool. It's a... It's got a thumb in it. automotive. You know, it's a... What? It's a musician, musician slide. You put your thumb in it, and you, as you play, you slide it like it's a long tube, but it's like for a musical instrument. In that game, just because I saw something didn't mean I recognized it or knew what it was. Seeing is not the same thing as understanding. Mm. So our question is, how can you recognize God working around you? Who and what helps you see God working in your life? Those are really good questions, Jessamine. Yeah. And I think I that we're going to find the answer in our Bible story. Oh. We're going to be reading from Luke 24, 13 to 49. Right now, pause the video, grab your Bible, and find Luke chapter 24, starting in verse 13. <laughs> We're still doing Easter because this story takes place on Easter. It's the same day Jesus rose from the dead. And remember, this morning, an angel rolled the stone away and told the women who followed Jesus that Jesus is alive. The women ran to tell Jesus' disciples, but the disciples didn't believe the women because their story seemed like nonsense. But everyone sees that the tomb is empty and Jesus' body is gone. So starting in verse 13, that very day, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village named Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still looking sad. Then one of them named Cleopas answered him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And Jesus said to them, what things? And they said to him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things have happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. And Jesus said to them, 
O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. Jesus acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So Jesus went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And Jesus said to them, Why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your heart? See my hands and my feet, that it is myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when Jesus had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sin should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I I am sending the promise of my father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. As you saw from our game, just because you see something doesn't mean you recognize and understand it. The followers of Jesus saw that his body was missing, but they didn't understand that it was a resurrection miracle. And when they saw Jesus himself, they didn't recognize him. So who and what helps us recognize when God is working around us? First, Jesus used the scriptures to explain God's plan. Reading the Bible helps us see the ways that God does things so that we can recognize what God is doing right now. The Bible also tells us what God has promised to do for his people, and we know that God will keep his promises. But explaining things with the Bible is the first part. The second part is understanding it with your heart and your mind. And for that, we need the power from on high, the Holy Spirit. If you are God's child, he has given you the Holy Spirit to help you understand God's plans for you. Can you see how the Holy Spirit has helped you recognize God's work around you and in your life? How does the Holy Spirit help you understand what God wants you to do? If you know what God has done in the Bible, you can explain the ways God works to other people. And then remember to pray that the Holy Spirit helps them understand too. That's all for this week. Don't forget to talk about these questions with your family.